In this video, we're going to be docking some vitamin D ligands into the vitamin D receptor. So let's start by opening the database where we have some vitamin D receptor ligands drawn out. So here we have the four ligands that we're going to be docking into the receptor. If we go to File and Browse, we can see what we're going to be docking. So here's the first one. This is vitamin D3. We're also going to be docking vitamin D2, calcitroic acid, which is one of the final metabolites of vitamin D, and also the glucuronic acid derivative of calcitroic acid. You see here that for the glucuronic acid derivative of calcitroic acid and for calcitroic acid itself, there are carboxylic acid functionalities, and we have those deprotonated so that they are correctly deprotonated under biological conditions. So we can go ahead and close the browsing window and we can open up the vitamin D receptor that we have prepared. Great, and we can find the binding pocket. Now let's get a more clear view of the ligand in here so we can see better how the ligands that we were docking will bind into the receptor. We'll go with that. So you can see the two rings here, the long chain off of the ring, and the ring down here, all for the crystallized ligand in this receptor. So we're now ready to dock our ligands. To do that, we can go to Compute and Dock. So right now, this is just showing the crystallized ligand that's in the receptor right now. Starting up here on the top, we don't need to change any of this right now. PH4 stands for Pharmacophore. We're not going to be using a Pharmacophore right now, but in a future video, I will go over how to use a Pharmacophore. Under Ligand here, we can choose the file icon and then choose our database. And you see now it's loaded in the ligands of ours that it's going to dock. So because we selected the database, it's going to dock all four of those ligands into the receptor. And you can see those ligands here. However, there is a way to dock only one or two of those ligands into the receptor. To do that, we'll go to our database. And let's say we want to dock number three and number four. So we'll select number three and four. And then go back to this window. Click the settings icon. Check selected entries only. Click OK. And you can now see it's changed the ligands to one of two, and it's only going to dock these two ligands into the receptor. I want to dock all four of the ligands though, so I'm going to go back there, deselect selected entries only, and now we're going to be docking all four of the ligands into the receptor. Next, we can leave the triangle matcher as is. I can change the number of poses though. So what's going to happen is MOE is basically going to throw these ligands into the receptor, and it's going to create different hydrogen bond interactions or other interactions to try to find the best pose or the best configuration that gives these ligands the best binding. So by changing the number of poses, let's say I put in 50 here, MOE is basically going to throw these ligands into the receptor 50 times and try to find the best configuration out of those 50. For the refinement here, we can either do rigid receptor or we can do induced fit, both of which are good options. For the rigid receptor, the receptor is not going to move at all. So what's going to happen is MOE is going to throw these ligands into the receptor and these ligands have to fit in this receptor without the receptor configuring to the ligands. However, if we choose induced fit, what can happen is the receptor then can move a little bit to conform to the ligands. That can give you a little bit better binding sometimes because the receptor then can conform around the ligands to have a little bit better interactions. A lot of times that means the docking score will be a little bit better for the induced fit model. So we will dock these ligands into the rigid receptor model as well as the induced fit model and see how they compare. Let's start with the rigid receptor and I'm going to set the number of poses to 25. I can then change the file name. I'll call this VDR docking one and we can go ahead and hit run. So you can see here, it pops up this database. This database is going to be filled with all of the docking scores. And you can see right now how it's throwing the different ligands into the receptor and how they fit. So now that it's done, let's go to the database and take a look. So here's the database that was created. So we see here is ligand number one with all the different poses that we have. If we scroll down, we get to ligand number two. There's ligand number three, and then number four. So we see that there's a lot of different data here that is populated in these different cells. What we care about is the S value here, which the S value is the docking score. Basically how this works is the greater the negative number, the greater the docking score or the better the binding. 
So for instance, this pose that has a docking score of negative 10.6 is going to be a better docking score, a better binding pose than the negative 10.0 pose. So let's now take a look at what some of these poses look like. To do that, we'll go to File and Browse. And we see the first pose of ligand number one docked here in the receptor. We can see that this pose looks pretty good. The two rings of our ligand here line up relatively well with the two rings of the crystallized ligand. The six member ring here also lines up relatively well with the crystallized ligand. And the long chain here is in relatively the same place. If we go to the next pose though, we see that this pose doesn't line up very well at all. The six member ring is up here on top and the long chain is down here on the bottom. So it basically has our ligand flipped here in the receptor. So we can then continue going through the poses. And we see that that one's also not super great. That one's also not great. That one's not very great. So it doesn't seem like any of the poses are gonna be better than the first pose. That means the first pose is likely the most accurate to what's actually going to happen when this ligand docks into the receptor. So now having found the best pose, we can go to ligand number two. And here is the first pose of ligand number two. We see that this pose doesn't line up very well at all. The six member ring is up top and the long chain is down on the bottom. So let's go to the next pose. That one also doesn't line up very well. However, the third pose here lines up very well. We see that these two rings line up very well. The six member ring lines up fairly well and the long chain is in relatively the correct place. That means that even though this pose doesn't have the best docking score, this is likely the most accurate pose to show how this particular ligand would bind into the vitamin D receptor. So let's take a look at the docking score here. Here for this pose, we have a docking score of negative 11.1. And if we take a look back at the previous ligand, we showed that the best pose for ligand number one had a docking score of negative 10.6. That means that what we have shown here is since the negative 11.1 is a slightly better binding score than the negative 10.6, the second ligand would theoretically bind a little bit better to the vitamin D receptor. So let's talk briefly about comparing docking scores. If we wanted to compare docking scores for the different ligands here in the vitamin D receptor, we can definitely make that comparison. However, if you try to compare these docking scores to the docking scores of different ligands in a completely different receptor, that can be an inaccurate comparison. For instance, if we were to dock some ligands into the GABA-A receptor, we might get docking scores that are in the range of negative 6 to negative 7, but those ligands might still be binding into the receptor. So that means even though those ligands have a significantly lower docking score, we're still getting binding into the receptor. That means that if we were to look at these docking scores that we're getting for the vitamin D receptor, we see a lot of negative nines, negative tens, negative elevens. And if we were to think that it's only those good of docking scores that are binding into the receptors, that would be inaccurate. That's because it's completely dependent on the receptor, how good the docking score will be for those ligands that are binding to the receptor. So let's now go take a look at the third ligand that we have docked. This ligand that we have docked here is calstroke acid, which is one of the final metabolites of vitamin D. We see here that this first pose is not a very good pose, so let's go to the next one. We see that this also isn't a very good pose, so let's keep looking through them. That's also not super good. That's also not great. That one's okay, it has the six member ring lined up pretty well. If we keep looking through here though, we see that none of these poses are very good. That's not too surprising though, because it's common that the metabolites won't bind as well as the parent compound. So from looking through these, it seems like this pose is probably the most accurate pose. The six member ring is lined up fairly well, the chain is lined up fairly well, and it's really just the two rings here that are bent in slightly an incorrect position. And you can see then, like we'd probably expect, the docking score is not nearly as good as the first two ligands that we had. So with that, let's go take a look at the final ligand. So there's the first pose, which doesn't look very good. So we can go on to the next one. That one also doesn't look very good. And you can see as we go through these, none of these have a very good pose. That's not too surprising, and it wouldn't be too surprising if we don't get any poses that line up very well. That's because we're adding such a large group here with the glucuronic acid. It wouldn't be too surprising if this large group didn't fit very well into this particular binding pocket. You can see though, one thing that's interesting is if we go back to this first pose, this first pose does have a very good binding score. That's probably not a very accurate binding score though, given how poorly the ligand lines up here in the receptor. 
What's probably happening though is the carboxylic acid that we see here on the glucuronic acid is potentially forming a new hydrogen bond interaction that's then contributing to an increased docking score. So let's now try this docking again with the induced fit model. So we'll close the browsing window. So we'll go back to compute and dock. We'll put in the ligand database. We will keep triangle matcher and change the poses to 50. We will change rigid receptor to induced fit and put 25 poses here. Then we'll name the file. And then we can go ahead and hit run. So we see this looks a little different. We still see the ligands being thrown in the receptor and being posed, but we now see some of the amino acids here and how they can change and conform as the receptor moves. one's done let's go take a look at the database so here's what we have in the database and you can see that these docking scores are already a little bit higher than what we had with the rigid receptor for the first ligand the highest docking score we had was a negative 10.6 and now we have a negative 11.3 so let's take a look at what some of these poses look like by going to file and browse and we can immediately see a difference in how this looks so we see immediately a difference in the protein here where some of the protein is now highlighted in green so what this is showing is how the receptor has moved a little bit to conform in the induced fit model. For instance, highlighted in gray, like we see here, is the receptor that has not moved, but it is showing in green how it has moved. So we see a slight difference in this little example here. We also see that the ligand that we have browsing right now is pretty difficult to see because it's highlighted in gray. So let's change that. Let's select the ligand that we have browsed. Go to select, extend, molecule, then render, atoms and then we can choose whatever color we want so i'm going to choose purple so it's a little easier to see so now let's take a look at some of these poses interestingly what we see with this first ligand is as we go through these different poses none of them line up very well with the crystallized ligand so this is one example where the induced fit model was not very helpful in creating a better fit for this particular ligand now it's not to say that some of these poses aren't completely inaccurate for instance if we go back to pose four we see that all the parts of the molecule here are generally in the correct position. We see the six member ring down here, the two rings here, and then the long chain up here. So because the receptor was allowed to conform around the ligand in this case, it may be that it forced the ligand into this configuration in order to create better interactions to have better docking. And it might be that because of that, this is actually how this particular ligand would dock in the receptor. So let's now move on to the second ligand. Here's the first pose, which doesn't look very good. Move on to the next one, still doesn't look very good. Still not very good. But we eventually get to a pose that does line up very well. Interestingly though, if we take a look at the docking score for this pose, we get an 11.1 for this pose. That's the same docking score that we got for this ligand with the rigid receptor model. So this is a case where the induced fit and the rigid receptor are giving the same docking score. Let's now go take a look at the third ligand. So here's the first pose, and if we remember back to the rigid receptor model, we never really got a perfect pose for ligand number three. So this pose might be as good as we're going to get, where it just loosely lines up with the crystallized ligand. And if we take a look through some of these other poses, none of them really line up perfectly. That one again lines up loosely. Similarly with some of these, we get the six member ring here lining up fairly well, but nothing else lines up perfectly well. So therefore, if we do say that the first pose we saw here is comparable to the rigid receptor model, we are seeing a higher docking score in this case. So finally, let's go take a look at the fourth ligand. Now, if we take a look through some of these poses, 
unsurprisingly, we aren't really finding one that gives a good pose. And that's not too surprising given that we never found a good pose at all for the Ridge Receptor model. One thing that's interesting to note though is we are getting an excellent docking score, the highest docking score we've seen out of this first configuration. In this case, the glucuronic acid portion looks to be down at the bottom here, and it's likely creating multiple hydrogen bond interactions that are giving it a really good docking score. And like we mentioned before, this might not be the most realistic, and it might just be that that particular glucuronic acid is in the perfect position there with close enough amino acids to create all those new hydrogen bond interactions. So with that, you should now have a pretty good idea of how to dock ligands into MOE using both the Ridge Receptor and Induced Fit models.